This is How to Look at Houses Like an Architect. I'm architect Katie Hutchison. We're going to pick up where we left off in the first installment when we talked about the base of home, how it meets the ground. While the last installment focused primarily on foundation walls, we're going to talk about foundation piers, openings, and bulkheads this time. Foundation piers are often made of wood, and they're quite common in buildings built off a wharf or shore, like this work building. A foundation of piers allows the building to tread lightly on its site, as in this example of the famed Haystack Mountain School of Crafts, designed by Edward Larrabee Barnes on Deer Isle, Maine. Uh, here, wooden piers rise from concrete sauna tubes, which protect the wood from direct contact with soil. As an alternative to concrete sauna tubes, brick piers are a dressier solution and can directly support beams and joists as in this cabin porch by historical concepts. Stone piers work in much the same fashion as brick piers, but make more sense on these rural outbuildings where field stone abounds. The corn crib to the left is elevated to keep pests and rodents from intruding upon corn drying within the ventilated structure. And the stone pier to the right supports a barn roof. Uh, the sidewall tram is scribed to fit it. You may recognize this cabin. It's featured in Lou Yurenik's memoir, Cabin, Two Brothers, a Dream, and Five Acres in Maine. When Lou discovered a high water table on his building site, he found that precast concrete piers were a better foundation alternative to conventional sauna tubes, since they didn't require the permeable forms that sauna tubes do. Uh, aesthetically, I preferred the tapered design of the precast piers. Uh, to the rear of the cabin, they directly support the floor structure. On the front, they receive wood piers. This is probably the first example of building on piers that's habitable year-round that I've shown thus far. And as you can imagine, it can be a challenge to insulate a building um, on piers. Lou is planning on insulating his floors with rigid foam boards, um, but generally uh, buildings on piers are seen um, on outbuildings or porches or seasonal spaces. Here, concrete is poured to a specific rectangular dimension to receive a bracket which in turn receives wooden post legs, if you will, which support an elevated cantilever deck. Uh, this is a neat custom alternative to round sauna tubes. And this example, like those prior, has a far lighter impact on the building site than a foundation of walls or even multiple foundation piers. Most of us, however, live in buildings supported by foundation walls, and often we need to make openings in those walls, either for access and or daylight. Here are a few interesting hatches, the first made of steel in a granite foundation, and two wooden examples, one in a brick foundation and another in a rubble foundation. Each place with contrast in the form of color and material to alternatively highlight the hatch or to downplay it. A foundation window may sit elegantly above grade with a stone sill, as in the brick foundation example, or it may require a small areaway, which is the space carved out of grade around the window to accommodate it. These two areaways are nicely edged with granite. A full height door in a foundation requires a larger areaway. Uh, this newer areaway is concrete topped with granite, which matches the granite door lintel. The challenge with areaway design includes water management and safety. Uh, since an areaway is open to the weather and sunken, it requires a drainage system. Um, and to prevent anyone from inadvertently tumbling into an areaway, it can require a guardrail system or a removable cover. One of the easiest ways to cover an areaway is with a bulkhead, which often has a steel utilitarian design, such as this. Uh, they can, however, take on a variety of forms, be made of other materials, and celebrate their hardware, as this wooden, more vertical design with long strap hinges does. Here are two more somewhat vertical designs. Uh, these cover areaways with small footprints. Their sloped verticality can facilitate drainage and allow for larger access doors and more generous headroom for those entering the areaway, depending on how the openings are framed. The bulkhead on the left offers bonus daylight through its windows, and the one on the right has an appealing cottage-like beadboard design. This is two views of a newer custom bulkhead. It's on the rear of a home that I designed in collaboration with Jeffrey Coper Architect. Neither Jeff nor I can take credit for this bulkhead design, however. It was a site visit surprise. It's grown on me, though. Uh, the mini gable is a fun reference to the overlapping gables on the home. The natural cedar finish is a nice touch. And the treatment of the side walls reminds me of arms. It's as if this bulkhead has been anthropomorphized to recall someone reclining in the sun at the rear of this home. As we've seen in these first two installments of How to Look at Houses Like an Architect, the base of home is rich with nuanced opportunities to express an attitude toward how a home meets the ground, 
and how that meeting can be modulated, opened, shaped, covered, and even fun. I hope you'll join me next time at How to Look at Houses Like an Architect.